Adobe has finally added a new feature to Photoshop that can accurately adjust white balance while also reducing color casts and to any extent that you'd like. This feature has been missing from Photoshop from day one, but not anymore. So let's dive into this to see how you can apply this to your real estate photography editing. We'll use this to demonstrate this tool because this is probably one of the worst case scenarios for color casts, having a unicolor room without any white ceiling and barely any white throughout. So this is the virtually staged finished image. When we were blending it, this is what it looked like. So if we break this down and take a look at it from the top to the bottom, we can see this is a flash shot using just a single shoot through umbrella. And then I added a luminosity layer here. That was the ambient shot. And this then got us a flambient blend and then just a little bit of color correction on the ceiling and then a couple darkened mode window poles. Now, if you're not familiar with this flambient blending of taking this flash shot, adding the ambient, and then eventually the window poles on top of that. I do have some resources to help you learn that. I've got a course on professional interior photography. I have a link to that down in the description of this video. To take it further in some of the editing, we're going to take a look at one of the ways using this new method that I also have in my course on expert editing for interiors. And there's a link to that also in the description as well. So what we want to do here is try to correct this color before we get it to our final staged image. And you can see it's not just a matter of reducing the color casts. If you look very closely, you'll see that between these two photos, there will be hardly any difference in the floor, but there'll be a big difference on the ceiling and the wall. So when we go back to our original before doing color corrections, we can see that the floor pretty much stays the same, just a little bit of difference in this staged final image, but it's dramatic when we take a look at this. And this is why it's not just a white balance issue. And what we're going to do is adjust this to varying extents and also selectively. That's the power of this new tool because it's an adjustment layer. And that adjustment layer is found under the layer menu. So it's a new adjustment layer. You go up to layer and then new adjustment layer and color and vibrance. Now at first glance, we'll just name this whatever you'd like. But at first glance, it just looks like another set of temp and tint sliders. And this layer used to be just vibrance and saturation and didn't have temp and tint. But it goes beyond that on what we're able to do because it's an adjustment layer and it also has this dropper. Now using this dropper isn't going to help us in this case because there's really not enough neutral color to click on and it'll probably throw it off. So what we want to do is we want to find a gray point, and this is very simple using Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off that layer for now, and I'm also going to shut off our window pulls because we want the color of the room to be adjusted and not the windows. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down here above where the layers were, where we did all of our blending. So I'm going to select the top one, which was just a little bit of a color correction on the ceiling up here. Whatever it is, is your top layer. What you can do is quickly just stamp all these visible layers together by doing control alt shift E. If you're on a Mac, it would be command option shift D. And when you do, then you get this one stamped layer. Next, what we want to do is to make this a gray point layer. And that's very simple. What we're going to do, I'm going to just expand this area here. And what we do is with our stamp layer, we'll go up to the filter menu and then we'll go down to blur and then average blur. This then makes one single color that's an average of everything that we have in that scene. Now we can go back to our color and vibrance layer. We'll go to its properties. And all we have to do is now use this eyedropper and click on this layer. Now that then adjusted the temp and tint based off of that color, assuming it's going to be a color cast. So at first, when we get rid of this gray point layer, layer one down here, when we get rid of that, this is going to be a bit too much. So it went pretty far. So there's two things that we're going to do. The first thing is that it probably went just a little bit too far across then the ceiling and the walls. So what we can simply do since it's a layer is we can adjust the intensity by just reducing the opacity of the layer as we see fit. 
So let's say that we like that. We'll leave it at 71% opacity. But we also have a problem here in that the floor was also highly desaturated. So we want to mask that out, but only to a certain extent. For instance, if I were to take the quick selection tool and I grabbed the floor real quick, and it did grab also the fireplace, that's okay. If I press delete on the keyboard, you can see that it deleted that adjustment off that area, but it was way too much. So instead, let's back out of that. I'll just do control Z to undo. And now here's a little trick on using masks. Go to the background color, which is black. Click on that. And instead of using black, which you want, which is black as zeros, type in 808080. What that is, you can see on the RGB, it's midway. It's 128, 128, 128. So it's midway between white and black, and then press OK. So now our colors are white and then gray. Now if I press delete, it's only going to delete halfway. So I press delete, and you can see on the mask over here on that layer, that instead of just being completely black as though I deleted it, it's actually gray because I only deleted it to the extent of 50%. Now I can press D on my keyboard for the default colors to go back to other editing. And then I'll just press control D to deselect that. So now if we take a look at putting on our window poles, this would then be our finished image before we did any virtual staging to it or any other edits. But this is now our blended image with color corrections. All we have to do to see the difference is turn this layer off and on. So this is with our adjustments. This is without those adjustments. You can see that we selectively use this. Now, once again, being a mask, you can also decide to delete certain other areas or add in other areas the way that you see fit and to what extent you feel you need to throughout the range. So this is a little bit different than other color correction techniques that I also teach in my expert editing course. For instance, like using curves layer, finding white points and black points, and really determining the proper type of colors and other color correction techniques like neutralize and other things that I show within that course. So this now is also included in the course and it's a very simple thing to do. And there's a lot of flexibility once again for a lot of other type of photos that you could be editing. In this case, it was just a matter of popping in then some virtual staging afterwards. And this then was our final image.